ladies and gentlemen of the media, the United Nations has no political agenda in Ethiopia. Our agenda is just one, to support the Ethiopian people, Tigrayans, Amarans, Afaris, Somalis, that have suffered so much. We cannot see people go on dying, dying because of bullets or dying because of hunger. We need to do everything to stop this conflict. We need to do everything for humanitarian aid to be distributed everywhere to everybody. We need to do everything for a, a, a dialogue to, to be established among Ethiopians to solve the problems in Ethiopia. Now, in this context, I was, of course, uh, deeply shocked with the fact that uh, seven members of the UN had been expelled from Ethiopia and declared persona non grata. We had the occasion to explain why this, in our opinion, is not in line with international law. But uh, uh, on top of that, because so many accusations are appearing, today I asked the ambassador of Ethiopia to provide me with any copy of any written document given by the government of Ethiopia to any UN entity in relation to wrongdoings of any of these seven members of the UN. And if such a document will be provided, we will, of course, immediately do an investigation why it did not come to my attention. Thank you very much. ever in the Security Council that I can recall. Uh, is this an expression of the level of your displeasure at the moment with the it's Ethiopian my duty to defend the honor of the United Nations. including the head of UNICEF, the head of the UN OCHA, and a senior official from the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. These expulsions are an affront. They are an affront to the Council, they are an affront to the UN, and they are an affront to United Nations member states and our shared humanitarian principles. As I said in the meeting, there's simply no justification for these actions. The UN is impartial and neutral. These groups are conducting important human rights investigations and they are delivering life-saving aid. UN personnel must be allowed to return immediately to conduct their urgent work, including trying to stop a potentially devastating and unnecessary famine. These are self-inflicted wounds, and they reflect how more broadly this is a conflict where Ethiopians are killing Ethiopians, where Ethiopians are raping Ethiopians. It is Ethiopia's leaders who are letting down the Ethiopian people. Three years ago, we were talking about Ethiopia as one of the fastest growing countries in Africa, a country full of promise and on the cusp of a major democratic and economic transformation. We were excited because Ethiopia looked like it might become the bedrock of Africa's optimistic future. One year ago, or a little less, we were told that the current situation would be a two-week law enforcement action. Now we're talking about terrible violence. We're talking about mass famine, rape being used as a weapon of war. And I want to make something clear. It is not too late to stop this dissent. It is not too late to prevent the famine, to get Ethiopia back on track. 
to save lives. There is still hope. We need a ceasefire that brings all parties to the table to find a peaceful way forward so that Ethiopians can return to the future we know it can have and that its children deserve. The government needs to allow for the resumption of services to northern Ethiopia. There will be no lasting peace in Ethiopia and the country's broader project of democratic and economic renewal will not be realized until there is a wider dialogue, one that includes all Ethiopians, on the future of that state. It is time for Ethiopian leaders to do the right things for the people of Ethiopia. Thank you. I will take a couple of questions. Thank you. Thanks, Ambassador Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Hi, um, Michelle. What, given what we just heard in the council from some of your colleagues, it doesn't look like any council action is imminent. So what's the US planning to do? Are you going to impose sanctions soon on Ethiopia? And if I could, just on Afghanistan, we heard earlier from the Afghanistan director of WFP warning about um, the collapse of the Afghan economy if there's no sort of injection of cash. What, um, what is the US doing to try and kickstart the Afghan economy? Thanks. Well, first on, on the uh, question of uh, Ethiopia, I think the fact of the council meeting today and speaking directly to the Ethiopians was an action. Uh, and believe me, it was not an action that was easy to take, uh, but we were able to bring the council gather, together in unity uh, to speak uh, about the situation in Ethiopia and have the Secretary General speak about the situation in uh, Ethiopia. And we called upon the government to reverse this decision. And we called on the government uh, to uh, move forward on a ceasefire and look for uh, a way forward. In terms of the United States, we do have tools at our disposal. You may have noted in my statement, I suggested it could be uh, that we do a resolution but also, we, uh, as you know, uh, we, uh, the president signed an executive order uh, a couple of weeks ago that gives us the possibility of putting sanctions against uh, individuals for gross violations of human rights and blocking of humanitarian assistance. And that is available uh, for our use uh, when we need it. On the uh, situation in Ethiopia, it is not the U.S. government's responsibility, but we have to work together as the international community to find a way to support uh, Afghanistan uh, moving forward. But I also will add that it is also the responsibility of the Taliban uh, to provide an enabling environment that allows for uh, the uh, for the world to provide them with that assistance. We continue to provide humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan, and we have worked to find ways around uh, the uh, sanctions uh, regime to ensure that humanitarian assistance continues to flow into the country. And we will look forward to working with others in the international community to see what we can do to support uh, the people of Afghanistan moving forward. James Bayes, Al Jazeera. Um, can I ask you about the new allegations that were made there by the Ethiopian ambassador to justify the expulsions? He said that UN officials had inflated and falsified data, even made up deaths. What is your response to those allegations? Uh, you heard what the Secretary General said in response to those allegations. Uh, it's our first time hearing them. The Secretary General asked for evidence. He asked for evidence that the Ethiopian government had brought any of these allegations to the attention of uh, the United Nations, and none of us have seen that. And as a UN Security Council member and a UN member state, we too uh, want to see uh, those allegations and to see where they're coming from. Uh, and the fact that you noted that they are new allegations, they weren't even lodged prior to uh, the seven individuals being kicked out, raises some concerns in, in my mind about those. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Thank you. Thank you.